Well, here I am taking my exam. It takes place here in about 20 minutes for my 107 pilot's license with the FAA. I've done quite a bit of studying, probably as not as much as I should have. Not as much as I should have. Or, or at least I'm having some doubts in that regard, but. Well, here it is. I just took my part 107 test and I passed with 80%. On to the next step, and I think I'll finish this video uh, back at home. I had a little bit of time to decompress from uh, an hour and 35 minutes of testing. Yeah, that's how long it, I was there. Uh, and there's a couple of nice takeaways that I learned from various people on YouTube that talked about the test and the strategy. And there's a couple I want to reinforce. Look. When you get into the test center, this is all you get. You don't get anything else. You don't even get to bring your own pen. They only give you two sharpened pencils and therefore uh, you're not gonna be marking up their book. But since you're only gonna get this in the test center, you know, when you get the test, um, you need to learn to find things in this book. Now, if you've been studying online, yeah, you can get this book PDF and go through the pages and zoom in on your computer or your device and really come up to speed. But I really recommend using the book because that's all you get in the test center. And there's a couple of cool things about the book that really is helpful. Number one, any questions related to charts you can find in the book. It's like an open book test. For example, right back in the back, I believe it's the very first page is uh, every symbol you can imagine uh, that could be on that chart is listed right here. It's nice to know where this is at instead of having to discover it because you're handed this book and all of your studying has been done either on a device or on a computer because that's not gonna help you find it in the book. It, uh, the question will refer you to a figure and then you need to find that figure in the book and you need to find it quickly. So get the book. Wow, I'm so glad I bought this book. I wanna show you a couple of things here and I hope I can get it to you or explain it to you in a way that's uh, really productive. And that is even if you study, even if you study really well and you know these things, they will throw trick questions at you that you will actually get the question, the answer wrong because you didn't read the question carefully. So I, I cannot emphasize enough, before you are certain, really look very, very carefully to make sure that, the, that you're actually answering the question. It's the question that brought you here. If you don't read it carefully, then you're not failing because you don't know the answer, you're failing because you did not read the question carefully. Failure is not an option. This is the Dallas-Fort Worth uh, area. And um, there was a question where they wanted to know, let me see if I can show it to you. You probably can't see it, but they wanted to know there's some towers right there and they give this scenario where you're going to inspect these towers. And of course, we've studied, we know if a tower is 500 feet tall um, and we need to inspect it, we are allowed to go 400 feet higher than that. So we could fly around that tower at 900, uh, you know, a 500 foot tower at 900 feet. That's 400 uh, above the structure we're inspecting. Well, you could, your mind can get all wrapped up in something like that. Well, the floor of that shelf is 1,500 feet. And uh, so I'm thinking, oh, well, that, that's, that's the answer. But in reality, the real question was, do you need to get ATC authorization? <laughs> it didn't have anything to do with the height of that tower or how high you could fly over it. And the questions didn't reflect that. The real question they were asking was, in this area, to do anything. You need to get ATC authorization in advance. I almost got that wrong because I was so wrapped up in reading the chart and the shelf and the floor of the shelf uh, that I could have easily gotten that wrong. Now, what's interesting is, is I bookmarked it because I, I 
my brain was spinning. And that brings us to uh, admonition number two. Like that where your brain is just cooking and you're, you're stressed and you can't, you can't figure that out. Bookmark it. You go ahead and bookmark it and you move on. Now what's interesting is sometimes another question will trigger something that'll help you to answer this question. That happened a couple of times. I remembered that question and realized they're not asking about how high I can go. The real question is, is do I need a ATC permission? And you always need ATC permission when you're inside of airspace that goes from the surface up. They're actually testing whether or not you can read a question accurately. They need to be able to, to answer a question effectively and really know what you're answering before you answer it. Because in the real world, when you're trying to decide a safe place to fly so you don't interrupt manned aircraft, um, you need to know the, the question before you can really come up with the answer. That, that's a real scenario in life. And so uh, it's the, that's part of the training. Uh, sometimes you have to you have to be able to uh, go to the legend there on uh, you know at the very front that tells you the symbols. I actually needed it during my test. Now, so uh, you know there was a question in regard to special activities in an area. So it tells you to go to Figure Twenty Four, and it it says Area Three. Now these little dots, of course, are the areas that they'll refer to you. And by the way, not all the questions will refer to you to a specific area on that page. Some of the questions, I'd say four or five of them, they didn't tell you anywhere to go on that page. You had to find it. And so, since you have to take this book into the into the test area, know this book. This is your lifeline as far as sectional charts go and in some areas, uh, airspace. But it asked, what kind of special activity is going on in section three? Well, that's, you know, it's kind of a big area, right? It's so small, and it's in red right at the tip of my finger there. But it's a, a little symbol of a parachute. So there's parachuting going on in that area. Now, it could have been anything. It could have been a military training. It could be, you know, it could be um, a restricted airspace, all, all sorts of things. For that question, had I not had knowledge of where to go for these symbols, uh, I'm not sure I would have figured that out. And it could have been a hot air balloon, and there's a symbol for that. The bottom line is, um, having this book was essential for me. Now, I'm, I'm going to give you kind of a breakdown. Uh, somewhere between 18 and 20 questions were about airspace. Now, that was one of my weak points, was airspace. Um, I felt like I was struggling with it because it's sort of abstract, you know, having to remember exact numbers. Uh, four or five uh, questions were about whether METARs, uh, I... I just got to the point where I could grasp METARs enough to where I felt pretty confident with that, but only had four or five questions. Um, four or five CTAF questions. Um, eight to ten related to uh, the care and the maintenance of the drone itself. I didn't expect that, but, it, but eight or ten questions related somehow to taking care of it. And uh, that also includes ones that who, who's to blame for anything? Who's responsible for everything? The pilot in command. Remember that. That's a big one. There, there were several questions. I don't know, three, four, five, maybe. Uh, you know, who's responsible? In any time the statement asks who's responsible, it's almost always. Well, it is always the pilot in command. There, they're trying to hammer that into you. First rule of leadership. Everything is your fault. Um, 10 or 12 sectional charts, um, which, in, you know, including flying in and around airports, which um, I like, I like maps. So uh, sectional charts were easy for map me. I've always been kind of a, a map guy. Um, but uh, if, if you're not into that, as you're studying, make note of what you're weak in. And that would be my, my recommendation. If you're weak about reading a question accurately, boy, no matter who you are, you should really read the questions carefully. You will miss a number of questions on your test if you're not the kind of person that reads the question carefully. 
and then be very careful about choosing. Sometimes there'll be two questions that are almost identical except for one tiny little thing and, and it's enough to make you fail that question. So overall, uh, I, can, I can honestly say when I went in, I kind of self-assessed and I determined I, I, I had about 80%, I mean, it was about 80% ready then. So logically I should get about an 80% score and that's exactly what I've gotten. Um, I think if I hadn't been so stressed on time, uh, you know, because I'm doing this under, I'm missing work to do all this and get all of this accomplished and uh, trying to get a bunch of things done at the end of the year. And I think a couple more hours, I would have gotten a higher score. But bottom line, figure out your weakness and focus on your weakness. If your weakness is weather, if your weakness is geography, that's charts. And uh, the beauty of it is, is if it's anything to do with charts, all of the questions will be right here, every one of them, because this is the book they'll refer you to. So um, I'm so glad I bought this book and I really recommend it. And the funny thing is, is uh, one of the recommendation was making a hash mark for every question that you knew for a fact that you knew 100% right. And uh, someone in YouTube said that they had like 42 correct ones like that, where they knew 42 of them were correct. I only had 26. Uh, so I had to just hope that my other answers were correct because I just had enough doubt that I couldn't do a hash mark on that. Uh, remember to uh, bookmark any questions you're not sure of. Come back later too. Anyway, uh, it was difficult, harder than I thought, but ironically, I hit the 80% that I kind of thought that I would. Liar! Liar! Get back, witch! I'm not a witch, I'm your wife! Hope the best for you and see you up there.